I've had it for the day. You better get going, too. It's 6.30. If you don't get going, you're going to be late for your group. I know what time it is, and I know where I'm supposed to go. Hey, I'm just trying to be a thoughtful, wonderful employer. Otherwise known as a busybody. Knock it off, Meryl. I don't like that kind of talk. I'm sorry. I'm not feeling well. Must be something I ate for lunch, I guess. We both had cottage cheese and fruit. I feel fine. Well, then maybe it was something I had for breakfast. Maybe. Whatever. Anyway, if any calls come in before you leave, I'm at the Half Note, that club on 9th Street. Want to wish me luck? Luck. I'd like a little more enthusiasm, please. Every job I take on means you work another whole week. Hope you feel better in the morning. I want you to find out who murdered my man. That's a good place to start. Go on. Well, he was fished from a lake a couple of weeks ago. The coroner's office said it was either an accident or a suicide. They're full of it, Miss Holland. Paul was a real good swimmer, for one thing. And for another, he wouldn't have committed suicide if his life depended on it. Somebody killed him. Well, Miss French, ordinary people don't usually get murdered. Paul Morley may have qualified for a lot of things, but Ordinary wasn't one of them. Paul Morley, the criminal lawyer? He was the best. He was also the toughest, so he had a lot of enemies. Well, I assume he had a family. What do they think? All he had was his wife, Nancy. Nancy Morley? Don't tell me you know her. No, I, uh, she's a friend of a friend of mine. Well, Nancy went along with the coroner's report. When I heard that, I decided to talk to the police myself. They told me the case was closed and there was nothing they could do about it. Paul and I had a real good thing going. I owe him to at least try and find out if I'm right about what happened. Well, I told you what my fee is. I'll be happy to pay it if you think you can help me. Why don't you start by filling me in on Paul Morley? Look, I've got to get back to work. Could we talk at the piano? Sure. Oh, 
Would you mind if I sat there? Mind? Who'll be my guest? Uh, for dinner, too, if you're available. Uh, no, I'm not, but thanks for asking. I really would like to sit there and talk to Miss French. Sounds good to me. Frankie, do me a favor. Move over. I really have to talk to the lady. I'm sorry, uh, just trying to be friendly. We both appreciate it. Just behave yourself, and later I'll play Melancholy Baby just for you. The most important thing is, Paul was taking some kind of medication, and his doctor said he couldn't swim or even exercise. Well, people don't always listen to their doctor. Paul did. He was having too good a time enjoying life to want to end it. The other thing is, even if Paul did decide to go for a swim, when they pulled him out of the water, he was wearing a T-shirt with a hole in it. Now, Paul was too fastidious about his clothes to wear something like that. Maybe what I'm telling you doesn't amount to much. There's nothing in it for me. I'm not in his will, nothing like that. But I really loved him. And like I said, finding out what happened is... And it's all I can do for him now. All right, I'll call you when I have anything to report. Thanks so much. Oh, Frankie, would you mind? Oh. I think I got lucky with you, Miss Holland. Let's hope so. Hey, Chip, don't be throwing it up there, man. Meryl? Hey, Meryl! Come here! What do you want? Come on in. It's still what do you want. Cassie has called six times, count them. Where you been? Trying to book a slow boat to China. Oh, yeah, you thinking of leaving town? That's a parole violation. I know it's a parole violation. Wouldn't be the first one. You boosted something? Look, if you want to uh, hand the item over to me, I could take care of it for you just this once. That isn't it. And it's none of your business. OK. Uh, Cassie would appreciate it if you'd call the Bar Association and get all you can on this guy, Paul Morley. Paul Morley. Sure. Is that it? That's it. But, Meryl, if you want to talk, I'm a good listener. So is my mirror. You. That's what they brought you in for. Oh, it ain't fair to bring up my past. It was for felonious assault. You broke the guy's leg. That's two years ago. Last time I saw him, he's dancing the boogaloo. He's healed already. You ought to forget it. Hey, Cassie, something I can do you for? You ain't listen to a word I said! Cool it, Eunice. How are you, Norman? Right. I was hoping to see Nick here. Well, right at the moment... Hey, uh, ah! <laughs> what's going on over there? Come on, get out of here. That's dirty hey, fighting Look lady. Look for assault. Not just for openers. Now, shut up and behave yourself. Hey, thanks, Cassie. You know what would happen if she'd have clobbered me with that typewriter, don't you? Sure, you'd have had to fill out her arrest papers in longhand. <laughs> well, anyways, Nick's not here. He went out to lunch. Oh, then I know where to find him. In the meantime, may I use his phone? Hey, help yourself. Thanks.
Yeah, yeah. 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 This place is supposed to be a haven for us cops, a joint where we, the mainstay of law and order, can enjoy a little privacy and recreation. That does not include allowing civilian women to come in here and invade our domain. Will you throw this chick out, please? I'd rather throw you out. She looks better and pays cash. Arrest me, Stanley. I'll be the first library bag in years. <laughs> All right, you're the visitor. You buy. Don't pay any attention to him, Cassie. I'm going to cut him off anyways. How you been? I thought I missed you guys, but now I'm beginning to wonder. You see what I mean? You see how fast they forget? Stanley, you don't get older. You just get noisier. <laughs> I still love you, though. You see Nick? Yeah, he's back there. Oh, I see him. See you later. <laughs> Hey, 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 Pretty girl. Give us a hug. Oh, oh God, sit down, please. Oh, okay. it's good to see you. What? What happened? Were you going for another medal? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. You know how clumsy I am. I tripped over my dog. But I want to talk about how you are. How are things going? Almost great. How are you? Well, how could anything be without you to brighten up my days? I mean, it's lonely. Very lonely. Oh, very good. <laughs> However, I don't believe a word of it. If it were true, what about the nights? I seem to remember your telling me you were in love. Oh, yes. I made the mistake of mentioning that to you, didn't I? Well, she turned out to be another one of those 10-day uh, wonders. <laughs> Shoot, I was planning on being a flower girl. <laughs> it was Nancy Morley, wasn't it? You always did have a good memory, didn't you? How could I forget? <laughs> yeah. Well, I should have known from the opening bell that this woman wasn't the one for me. She was married, and here I was. I... But I don't have to explain that to you, do I? You know you don't. I just stopped by. Say hello. You did, did you? <laughs> Cassie, you disappoint me. I mean, come on, this meeting, us talking here like this, it's not necessary, is it? If you got something to say, go ahead and say it. All right, I'll save you the trouble. I know that Morley's girlfriend has called you in. News sure does travel fast. I'm sorry. I don't want you to beat around the bush with me again, Cassie. You owe me a little more than that. You're right. I'm sorry. I really am. I'm on the Paul Morley case. Well, that's better. But what case? I mean, the man he drowned accidentally. I saw the report. Irene French thinks he may have had some help. Well, she would. Maybe he did. Maybe he deserved it. Who knows? But I don't like the idea of what happened with us today, Cassie. And I hope the next time we see each other, things will be different. Well, you open. What do you do? Took two cards. Bet 20 cents. You're 20. Raise your quarter. Now, put up or fold, and no long conversations. Minimum wage laws, three thirty-five an hour. Now, that gives me a little over three minutes to make my decision. Don't rush me. Shaq, I'll pay you 15 cents for half the three minutes. Go for it, Shaq. Most money you make here today. Don't touch my card. Depend on it. She's too young for him. No wonder he can't concentrate. What are you doing here, anyway? This is supposed to be a private game. Just happened to be in the neighborhood. I wanted to talk. In the neighborhood? Come on, your office is 10 miles from here. Don't jump all over me because you're losing. Well, then go home. I'm out some bucks. And I need my concentration. OK, OK. Did you ever hear of a lawyer named uh, Paul Morley? With all my other sins, I can't afford to speak ill of the dead. Force yourself. Yeah, I ran into Morley a couple of times. He was a real low life. Somebody finished them off. The line forms to the right. Hey, Shaq. I'll see your quarter and raise your quarter. Well, I bought the same time you got, so just wait a minute. 
Who's at the head of the Morley hate list? Well, off the top of my head, a couple of guys. One named Kane, the other named Felcher. They were supposed to get special treatment for some testimony, but all they got was 10 to 20. Well, if they're in, they're not running loose in the streets. That's just background. You can find it in the papers. Oh, there was another guy, a Sam Rosson. He tried to get Morley disbarred, then suddenly he backed off. And Rosson is no piker, either. Sounds promising. Hey, you. None of what I'm telling you is news. You could have picked it up without tracking me down here. What do you really want? Call Nick. Nick Rowan. Take him out to dinner for me. You think he's involved in this? Oh, only indirectly. He's using a cane. But he keeps rubbing his thigh. And you want to find out if Nancy Morley is changing the bandages? I don't want to find out. I have to. Cassie, suppose it turns out Nick's up to his neck in all this. It won't. Get out, Cassie, before it's too late. I can't. That goes against everything Nick ever taught me. Hey, Shaq. Time's up. What are you going to do? I'll see you. I got two pair, aces over threes. <laughs> aces over nine. You lose. Don't say that. Come on back over here, Shaq. I want you to pay for my new bridge work. I, uh, I didn't feel like eating alone. I don't feel like eating at all. And do me a favor, no niceness. I don't care to have any niceness directed at me today. Neither do I, baby. I like your attitude. So, how's uh, group therapy? I don't go to that group anymore. I thought it was a condition of your parole. It is. But wrecking an innocent person's life isn't. Say what? If you must know, I'm in love with the man in the group. And if I followed my impulses, his whole life might be ruined. Would you consider enriched rather than ruined? No, I wouldn't. And I don't think his wife and kids would either. His wife and kids? Well, see, now that's a... Still, staying away from the group, that doesn't solve anything. You gotta work it out. You get together with the guy and the therapist. The guy is the therapist. Forgive me, I'm slow. Wait a minute, you're supposed to fall in love with your therapist. I, I read it in a magazine, it's a good sign. No. Well, I'm glad I could be of so much help. Let's eat. Cassie Holland's office. Oh. Okay. He happens to be sitting right here, bugging me. Okay. Uh, please, not you two. I'm fine. Bye. Cassie? Yes, she's stuck somewhere out in the boonies. She wants you to take that over to Howie Schwartz. And take that food with you. It's really, I'm not hungry. But, you know, maybe a couple of french fries wouldn't hurt. Wash them down with the hamburger. One pair of bathing trunks. And one t-shirt. Apparently the deceased was wearing them when he drowned. I thought I was the only person that wore a t-shirt when he swam. <laughs> what am I looking for? Uh, same stuff you'd be looking for if this was a police case. But but it ain't. We closed this one out. Yeah, no, but you're doing this as a favor, right? For Cassie. Oh, you put it that way. Uh, what choice do I have? But it'll cost us. Yeah, sure. How much? I'll work it out with Cassie. Okay, Howie, but you be fair. You know, she loves you. Should only happen. <laughs> I heard that. So you'll call her as soon as you find something. When will I ever be able to say no to that lady? Never, I hope. Do you like it? Very much. It's such an interesting, warm color. Thank you. 
The color glazes were developed by my own formula. Really? You, um, you picked a very interesting business to invest in. Well, it's risky, but it's been a lifesaver for me. I could surround myself with lovely things and forget that at the end of the day, I had to go home to a man I loathed. Getting to the issue at hand, right? Of course. Miss Holland, my husband, Paul Morley, was a reprehensible man. Unscrupulous, unpleasant. One has to wonder why I married him, right? To tell you the truth, I can't remember. In other words, you couldn't care less about my investigation. I'm not quite that cold-blooded. If there was some chance that Paul was murdered, I would want that uncovered, of course. I think this is the moment when you remind me that we met once. I was with Nick Rowan. Do you want to be reminded? Well, it would give me an excuse to ask about it. Do you need one, now that you're free to do as you please? He's never forgiven me my marriage to Paul. Oh, I'll bet Nick would forgive you almost anything. That's a very romantic thing to say. But it's not accurate. Look, I have a business to run. Oh, certainly, I understand. But uh, I really would like it, if you wouldn't mind, to check out your husband's office. Ah, uh, 108 Six Drive. The manager has the keys. Thank you. Miss Holland, Paul and I were married for 12 years. The only thing his death means to me is that I've been spared at 13. He had Irene French. Why didn't you just leave him? Well, he wouldn't let me. I guess I was better at a bar association dinner than Irene. The truth is, I told him I was going to leave. He was a very violent man. He... He hurt me. And then he... I imagine it's Irene who hired you. I guess it's important to her to think that Paul didn't kill himself. It isn't to me. out of that closet nice and easy. with that banner, it tears easily. Careful now! As the carnival is a big success, it'd be a crying shame if one of those things came crashing down and someone got hurt. And don't forget to roll the banner, not fold it. 
Excuse me, Father. I'm Cassie Holland. I'm looking for Nick Rowan. Otherwise known as Nick Rowan's Protestant. Uh, is that what he told you? I'm Father Nolan. <laughs> Hello, Father. Nick said he's getting a T-shirt printed with that on it. He did. <laughs> His office said he was here. He's helping us restore order after the festivities. He's up there, reaching for the angels. You can get to him on that heist. Thank you, Father. Joe, take the lady to the roof. is conducive to miracles, but I never expected you to be one. <laughs> uh, Nick, yesterday I went to check out Paul Morley's office. Somebody was waiting for me. Luckily, all I got was a black and blue arm and a thundering headache. Did you see who it was? No. Who I did see was Nancy Morley. Nancy wouldn't hurt a fly. No. It was a man. But she gave me the keys to her husband's office. She knew I'd be there. No one else did. I think it's time you started telling me the truth, Nick. You and Nancy are still lovers. She said that? Quite the opposite. Nick, you were my teacher. You got to learn to read between the lines, girl. She wanted a divorce. It's obvious there was someone else. You. As your teacher, maybe I should have done a better job. Nick, Paul Morley was probably... Paul Morley was what? You don't really know that Morley didn't die naturally or commit suicide, do you? Well, do you? No, I... mean, I... you had one talk with an angry woman. Then you go off half-cocked, making assumptions. Even worse, making accusations. Anybody could have got into Morley's office. Anybody could be Nancy's lover. Or no one, for that matter. Is that what I taught you, how to be inept, fumbling? Nick... Oh! 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 Careful now! Oh. Hey, what I taught you, girl, was look before you leap. Remember? You want a hot dog, too? You must be kidding. You know, I called Nick and invited him to dinner, but he turned me down. Said I wasn't his type. I must say I'm glad. You owe me 50 bucks, though. If you didn't eat, how come? I pursued other avenues. Avenue one. The police surgeon didn't know about Nick's leg being out of commission. I figured that. Avenue two. His personal physician didn't know about it either. Here comes the 50 bucks, right? You got it. Now, avenue three. Owed me a favor from way back when his license was taken away from him. He makes his bucks now by patching up gunshot wounds and ratting on his patients. He was in the fleshy part of Nick's thigh by way of a police 38. When? The day before Morley bought it. You have a fascinating assortment of friends. Tell me about it. Lady, would you mind listening to those folks over there? You know where there's a payphone, I have to call Merrill. Mm, down the street. I'll be right back. Enchanté. His doctor said he was taking something called MAO. What does it do? It's an enzyme inhibitor, and it also acts as an antidepressant. And it doesn't show up on a standard screen autopsy. Thanks, Meryl. Oh, and the cop said that Morley had apparently polished off about two bottles of red wine before he took his swim. Okay. Uh, hey, I'm sorry I haven't been in. Are you okay? Better. Does that mean you went back to your group? Did that bum Benny tell you? No. Your parole officer called. He said you have two days to get back to it. Do it, Meryl. I'd miss you if they sent you away. I'll keep it in mind. Oh, Benny's over at the lab. It seems Howie Schwartz found something. 
Good, I'll keep in touch. Okay, bye, Meryl. Bye. <laughs> Wait, wait, back up a little bit. As in? Yeah. What is it? Wolf vipers. Green and black, Scottish. I'd say uh, good quality. And yeah, take a look at this. Huh, that, that looks kind of like grass stains. Very close. Ice plant, you graduate. Yeah? What's that other stuff? Some kind of slivers, uh, wood with paint on them, and the paint's chipped. And you found all this in the T-shirt? Yep, that in a big hole. Uh, looks like he slipped on something and fell in the lake. Well, that's great, Howie. Uh, Cassie said to give you a big kiss. Uh, take a rain check. Whatever you say. Uh, do you mind if I use your phone? I got to leave the lady a message. Sure, go ahead, whatever you want. Take it easy. Lady, if you yell, I'm going to blow you away. Got it? Now you can talk. And I mean talk. Where are my files? What files? I don't know what you're talking about. The files and pictures Morley had. They're my personal stuff, and I want them back. Now, they weren't in the office, but you were. So they're probably here. Oh, I get it. Morley was using information from your files to blackmail you, to get you to drop the disbarment charge. I'll bet your name is Sam Rawson. So what if it is? And who are you, anyway? I'm a private investigator. Private investigator? You probably do good if you turn over 500 a month. You see a score like this, you jump on it. Now, look, if you think you're going to take over where Morley left off and blackmail me, if I were you, I'd forget about those files, OK? I'm okay. Who was that? A dissatisfied client of Paul's. What are you doing here? 
Oh, Paul and I used to meet up at this lodge when we got the chance. I came to pick up some clothes. Oh, God, look at the fender. It's all smashed. Oh, it's terrible. I'm not even sure you can drive it. It's a window. Is this... Is this yours? It was Paul's. He gave it to me. It's very special. Is it one of a kind? No, Nancy has one, too. Paul ordered two of them specially. His grandfather was a Scot. That tartan is the You're family. saying Nancy's car blanket is just like this one? Exactly. Why? We should know in just a little while. Sorry, this garage is for tenants only, mister. I'm from County Casualty. Mrs. Paul Morley's the tenant here, right? I don't know nothing, mister. Here. 1109B. Thanks. Do you remember back about two weeks? I got a really bad memory, mister. Two weeks ago, what? I'm trying to verify what time she came in. You see, there was an accident and... Details is boring. It was Friday, the 14th of this month. Yeah, just so happens I do remember. Mrs. Morley's an in early. A lot of them in this building drift in and out all hours of the night, but not her. Except that night, she came in at 3 a.m. Are you sure? Yeah, see, because if you want to gain entry here in this building after midnight, you got to ring for whoever's on call. I was. So when the bell rang... Details is boring. <laughs> you want to see the car? It might help. Which one is it? It's the Mercedes in spot 12. The keys are over there, but uh, I can't let you mess with it. Here, you've already got enough for a great meal. This will cover the wine. Now enjoy your meal. Now. Who's going to watch the lot? Me. You know where the attendant is? On a coffee break. Take any spot that's vacant. All right, thanks. Cassie Holland. Cassie? Go ahead, Shaq. It's good news. For us, at least. I found the blanket in back of Nancy Morley's car, and it's been used for something more than a foot warmer. So it looks like Nick is off the hook. Thanks, Shaq. I think I'd like to tell him myself. I don't envy you. I'll talk to you later. Advisor. I saw Mr. Wonderful last night. Oh. I told him everything. He told me what you told me, that people are supposed to fall in love with their therapists. He's a smart guy. And that what I was feeling was really trust. And that trust is love, but in this case, it's love without the trimmings. <laughs> you know what? I was so relieved, I even gave back the red blouse. What red blouse? Don't ask. Just know it wasn't easy. Red is my favorite color. Oh. This is for you. And thanks. Well, thank you. This is, uh, 
It's just the most beautiful red plant I've ever seen. Excuse me, but have you seen him? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. It's all right. It's... These days, it's awful. Getting so I'm afraid of my own shadow. Oh, well, I know. Jack, but I was I'm wondering if... because there's this man been hanging around over there. He's been hanging around a long time. Well, you're right to be cautious, but if there's one person in the world you'd be safe with, it's that man. Well, bye. Have a good day. Okay. You too. Nick. The time I turn around these days, there you are. Like a bad penny, huh? Yeah, <laughs> sort of. How'd you find me? Your office said you were someplace where there were no phones, where you couldn't be reached. Old habits are hard to change. Yeah. Nick, there's something you have to know. Now, wait a minute. I've been standing here thinking that I know more than I want to know about everything. So if you're going to do me a favor, just save it. I wish I could, but I can't. I did my job. And Irene was right. Paul Morley's death wasn't accidental. It was Nancy. What do you mean, Nancy? I have enough hard evidence to make a pretty good guess as to what happened, Nick. Well, let's hear it. Nancy went up to the lake, probably to have it out with him, found him passed out from drinking and the medication that he was taking, and probably motivated by her hatred, she was able to roll him onto a blanket and drag him down to the water. No, I say you're wrong. I'm not wrong, Nick. Well, you're right about the blanket, but Nancy didn't kill anybody. You see, I'm the one that did it. Yeah, it, it was me. You couldn't have, Nick. You were at the church helping with the bazaar when it happened. Well, you checked with Father Nolan, didn't you? Well, he's an old man. He's got me mixed up with another Irish cop. Did you tell her that you know? I wanted to offer you the chance to do it. Well, it's all because of me anyway. See, the day before Morley died, I took my dog running in the park. And Morley was waiting for me, and he was smiling at me. And he asked me, do I want her back? And I said, yes. He says, well, it's going to cost you. He says, I have a client who wants your friend, Judge Alvarez, to get off his back. Now, if you do that, you can have the hooker back. You can have the hooker back. Are you listening? So I swung at him, and, and he swung back. He's a very big man, so we rolled around on the ground. Somehow he got a hold of my service pistol. That's what happened to my leg. And my dog jumped him, and Morley took off. Then Nancy heard about it. I guess she figured that she had to kill Morley because Hey, if she didn't, then I would. She's a very rare woman. I'm sorry, Nick. Yeah, and I'm sorry, too. Put that away. If I do, are you going to call the cops? You know my answer. The fact is, girl, she means a lot more to me than you do. We can get it any time in this business. There's a lot of people chasing us. Sometimes they catch up. Do you remember the first time you brought me here? That was a long time ago. You'd just been assigned to my patrol car. It was one of those awful days. Every call we went out on took us to one horror worse than the other. You said, come on, girl. Let's get away from the streets. You need to remember there's still some beauty in the world. So do I. 
Things don't change, Nick. People change. You're not going to shoot me. Cassie! Cassie! I've been carrying this gun a long time. I've never misused it before. And I know you never will again. normal people do. Because I am not normal. Normal people eat dinner before midnight with attractive women who pay attention to them. You are, um, you're a lousy date. Shaq, why don't you have dinner with Michael? He'll agree with you. I did that last night, and he does agree. Good. I'll consider the two of you engaged. What's bugging you? Maybe you are. Okay. We'll put that out of the way. So the state of California has a new name to process in its penal system. And Nick Rowan has lost the woman of his dreams. He's got all the right in the world to mope and feel rotten, but you don't. Nick is a great guy, and I feel bad for him. So don't play hard and cynical with me. I've seen you tear up more than a few times yourself. Mr. Rawson. Miss Holland, I... I want to apologize. You want to apologize? You try to choke me, knock me down, run me over, and you think an apology and a basket of flowers is going to make everything wonderful? I'm sorry. I thought you were going to take over where Molly left off with me, and I was wrong. Could you forget about it? I've got a list of things to forget about as long as my arm. I guess one more won't make that much difference. I don't know how to thank you. If I were you, I'd just get out of here before I change my mind. Of course. Hey, Rawson. Leave the flowers. <laughs> Thank you.